Welcome everybody. This week we're going to talk about politics. And I know a few of you just yawned because politics is not your thing. And a few of you just perked up. Really? A confirmation class about politics? What's pastor going to say? I didn't see this coming. Maybe a few of you just got nervous. Maybe moms and dads in the room. What is pastor going to say? I didn't see this coming. And there are a few others who are ready to shut this whole video off because you feel that the less said about politics, the better. This is a pretty short video, so I hope that you'll stay with me because the first thing I have to say about politics is that it's probably not what you think. Politics have been around for a long time, and so is the Greek word polis, the Greek word that gives us our word politics. The Greek word polis is just the same word as city. And so you get towns like Indianapolis. In the state of Indiana, the word polis shoved on the end of it gives us Indianapolis, Indiana City. So the capital of Oklahoma is Oklahoma City, and the capital of Indiana is Indiana City. It's just that they made it fancy because they used the Greek word at the end of it. So a polis is a city, and politics are the activities it takes to take care of of a city. Politics, in its truest sense, is does the place you live have a fire department who comes when there's an emergency? Does it have hospitals? Have resources for poor people who need help? Are there roads to drive on? Are people safe from invaders? Are people nice to be around? Is it the kind of city that's a good place for kids and for grandmas? And if the answer is no, politics asks the question, well, how do we fix it? How do we take care of the place where we live? So do you care about the place where you live? Do you want it to be the best it can be? If you said yes, well, then you care about politics. It's why kids run for student council. It's why grown-ups serve on school boards or homeowners associations, because they care about the place where they live and they want it to be the best it can be. And there's a fascinating passage in the Bible. In Jeremiah chapter 29, you can flip there, but let me stay the, set the stage for you. God's people are in trouble. So much trouble that God told them they can't live at home in the promised land anymore. You remember how God kicked Adam and, Eden, Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden because of their sin? Well, the sin of God's people got so bad later that God kicked them out of the promised land in a similar way. He sent them to live under a foreign king in a foreign land. They were far from home. They weren't in charge anymore. And life was rough. This time in the Bible is what's labeled as the exile. And you've probably gone into exile too. Every time you've had to be sent to your room or go to time out or stay after school in detention, you're in exile. You're somewhere you don't want to be, doing things you don't want to do, and you don't have any say in the matter. But you know it's going to end. Timeouts don't last forever, and neither does the exile. So God's people are in exile in the, the foreign land of Babylon. They've got these awful kings who worship these awful false gods. Some people die on the trip. Some people die once they get there, and people can't wait to get home. But in Jeremiah chapter 29, God sends these people a letter, and it starts in verse 4. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens, and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they might bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. The Lord tells his people, care about politics. Want the place that you live in to be the best it can be. Even if you don't want to be there, work for its good, not just for the good of yourselves, but for everyone's good around you. Because 
if politics is anybody's job, it's the job of God's people because it's a job that comes directly from him. So what do you notice about the place where you live? What's already been taken care of? What's not quite as good as it could be? And that could be anywhere. Are we talking about your country, your state, your city, your, your school, your neighborhood, even your own family? How do you show that you care about the place where you live and want it to be the best it can be? How can you have the heart God asks his people to have? Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, you care so much about this whole world, but even the individual places where we call home. Help us to care as much as you do and to seek the benefit, the the welfare, the good of everyone around us, that your glory might be displayed. Amen.